Hey everyone, I'm Dustin, and I'm back with another quick guide for you. Today, I'll show you how to transform this ordinary checkbox input to a responsive toggle switch with just CSS. Toggle switches are a great way to show a UI state, and you've probably seen them just about everywhere from websites and mobile apps to your phone or computer's operating systems. Be sure to check out teamtreehouse.com forward slash blog for a written version of this tutorial. Alternatively, you can also check out our GitHub repo for this project at github.com forward slash treehouse. I'll have links to both down below in the teacher's notes or description of this video, as well as a link to our code pin if you just want to take a look at the code really quick. If you'd like to follow along with me, let's get started. To get started, hop into your project's HTML file and make sure that it includes an input with a type of checkbox. I have a container wrapped around mine, and that's okay. I'm only using that to center it on the page. You just need to make sure you have your input with a type of checkbox. Once you have that, you can open your project style sheet, and you can start by setting up a new input rule. And the first property value that we'll set up in here is a WebKit appearance of none. And if you aren't familiar with this, it basically hides the default styles for a UI element. So if you hit save, you should see it disappear. Next, we'll set it up with a position of relative. And that's so that when we set up the circle inside of our toggle switch, we can position that absolute relative to the parent, which is the input element. We'll give it a width and a height. And then we can set up a border radius of 25 pixels with a light background color of gray. So when we click on our checkbox, it will turn from gray to green. So what we can do is set up a transition property for the background for 0.3 seconds so that the background color change is subtle. Next, we can set up our outline with none, and we can set up a cursor of pointer. That way, when we hover over our checkbox, we'll have a nice pointer cursor. Now, we'll want to set up the actual circle inside of our toggle switch, and we can do that by using the after pseudo element. We'll give it an empty content and we'll position it absolute. And it'll be absolutely positioned relative to its parent, which is the input. We can give it a top of 50% and left of 30. And you can play around with these numbers as you wish. This is just what I'm going with. We'll set up the transform to translate negative 50% on both the X and Y axis with a border radius of 50%. We'll set up our height and width with 1.25 rim. And we'll give it a background color of white. We'll also transition the left property 0.3 seconds. Hit save and now you should see a toggle switch. But clicking it doesn't actually do anything. We don't need JavaScript for this. We can actually toggle the checked state of this input by writing some CSS. So we can use the checked pseudo class on the input and give it a background color of green. We'll hit save and now when we check our checkbox, it should turn green. Next, we can target the after pseudo element when the input is checked by writing input with the checked pseudo class and after pseudo element. And we'll give it the left property 70% so that when we click our toggle switch, the toggle will go from 30% to 70%. And there we go. We have a responsive toggle switch just using CSS. Remember, this is still just a regular checkbox input, so you can still grab its value with JavaScript when building out your web page or app if you need to. There surely are tons of ways to create toggle switches. This is just how I like to do them, and I find it's pretty quick and easy. I hope this guide helped, and don't forget to check out the description or teacher's notes of this video to get links to our blog, GitHub, and CodePen for this project. Until next time, have fun and happy coding.